Well, that's another suspect test for the books. And as with all suspect tests, there have been a few surprises, which I guess isn't that surprising, considering that every person, every player, finds different stuff surprising, depending on their skill level, on the type of team they tend to run. But nonetheless, enough of that little introduction. Let's take a look at the results and see what happens. So, these are the results compiled into a graph to make viewing a little easier. As, as was the case last time, blue represents the votes that are in favor of a ban, and orange represents the votes that are against a ban. The first purple line at 50% represents the simple majority barrier that is required for at least being guaranteed to be looked at next round, and once you get a simple majority, all you need is another simple majority to get banned. And the second purple line is at 66.6%. Whenever you get that, you are automatically banned, no ifs, no buts, you are not allowed starting with the next round of suspect tests. So as you can see, only one band this time around, and it's Garchomp. As discussed in my previous video on the matter, they decided that they were sick of having to deal with the potential misses that would allow Garchomp to tear your team apart. So Garchomp was banned with a score that's higher than 75%, which is very, very impressive, especially since it was the first time that it was nominated. But yeah, the good news is that we're not gonna have to hear this bullshit about a Sand Veil combo ban anymore, since the only major problem when it comes to Sand Veil is now gone. Now there's one thing that I find funny about this situation, is that there are some people who seem to be under the impression that if there's a Dream World Gibble released soon, that Garchomp will be allowed once again only if it has rough skin. Which doesn't make any sense because it would create the biggest double standard ever. Blaze Blaziken isn't allowed, so why should rough skin Garchomp be allowed? Same for something like, you know, Synchronize Espeon in Underused. That isn't allowed, so why should rough skin Garchomp be allowed in Overused if it ever appears? And another thing about the Garchomp ban is that, well, people are speculating right now, you know, those who use Garchomp, well, who are they going to use instead? Some people think they're going to be using Flygon since it's the, sa it's the same typing and everything, but there are some people who have their doubts because, like it or not, the power creep really wasn't very friendly towards Flygon. It really fell a lot in uh, usefulness, even though it has tools that Garchomp doesn't have. No, there are a lot of people, though, who are thinking that most of the Garchomp usage will go to either Dragonite and Salamence on the Dragon front, or to Landorus on the Ground type front. And personally, I think the Landorus idea makes the most sense, since it's very similar to Garchomp. It's got high attack and troll tier speed, as they call it. And it's got Sand Force, even to power up some of its moves like Earthquake and stuff. It also has the quadruple weakness to Ice, which is something, well, that's a bit less flattering. But it does lose out on uh, Outrage, which is definitely a huge loss. So that's about all I had to say about Garchomp. I'm really glad that we're not gonna have to deal with this stupid Sand Veil thing anymore. Smogon has really uh, made a good decision this time around. Yes, yeah, Smogon making a, a good decision. That's really rare. No, not really. It, it, it was intended more as a jab towards the mindless Smogon hating drones, but otherwise, yeah, very glad things turned out this way. And other than Garchomp, the, the other major point of contention was Drizzle, because if you've been following competitive play for the last few months, it's becoming increasingly, well, I wouldn't say obvious, but there are a lot of signs that even with the combo ban in place, Drizzle might still be a little too much to handle. First we had Manaphy, 
who might not be broken if there's no permarain, but I guess now we'll never know, or at least we won't know as long as Drizzle's around. And now it turns out that Thunderous is something that might be a little too much uh, under permanent rain, because, well, obviously 100% accuracy thunder is a huge hand to that thing, and perhaps the most annoying thing about Thunderous is that on top of the incredible offensive firepower it has, it even has access to stuff like Priority Substitutes, Priority Taunt, Priority Thunder Wave. It's got priority on everything that isn't an offensive move. And just to give you an idea of how good Prankster is, Whimsicott is overused strictly because of Prankster. It would be going absolutely nowhere otherwise. And that they were going to have Dream World Sableye, Sableye is going to be overused very easily as well. So take an ability that could make Sableye, of all things, overused, and put it on a legendary. Yeah, you get the kind of thing where this is leading to. And maybe they thought that since uh, Thunderous is already very fast to begin with, that uh, priority on non-offensive moves shouldn't matter too much. Well, guess what? It does. Because Thunderous, as far as I know, has 111 base speed. Now, that's a lot. There's no denying that. However, there are still many, many Pokémon that are faster than it. So, to be able to paralyze them or taunt them or something before they even get a chance to move is a gigantic asset no matter how you slice it. And add a, a thunder that always hits, has 30% chance of paralysis hacks, all that off 125 base special attack, and yeah, I can sort of see why people would want it banned. Now it's sort of awkward that Thunderous is on the verge of being banned, but not uh, Tornadus, who's struggling to make it into overuse at this time, because, well, let's face it, the addition of the electric type does wonders for Thunderous. It, ha it adds no weaknesses at all, since its other type is flying, it has a bunch of resistances, and it also adds Thunder Wave, which, as I said, Thunderous absolutely loves. And my guess is that uh, this guy is going to be what everyone talks about in the next round, because I've seen quite a lot of disagreement over whether it's actually broken or not, despite the result that you're seeing right now. Uh, there's the one guy who, uh, who cast the last vote uh, this time around, who bragged about it in uh, the Smog on Thread for round four of suspect testing. He bragged about how he saved Thunderous's ass from being banned, because uh, if you look at the graph, it was very close to having a super majority, so this guy pretty much says, it's because of me that Thunderous isn't banned yet, and the very next post was a post calling him pretty much every name in the dictionary for not realizing that Thunderous was so obviously broken and should be banned because it's impossible to handle, whereas there are other posts in that very same thread uh, saying, you know, well, Thunderous can be dealt with. I I tried a variety a variety of teams, and uh, I just was able to handle it fairly well. And see, th this is what's fun about this whole thing. It's that there are all kinds of disagreements that come from the skill levels of the players, what what types of teams those players tend to run, as well as I was saying at the very beginning of this video. But ultimately tiering is decided in function of how the best players can handle each Pokémon. That's the case for any competitive game, in fact. Be it Pokémon, or Super Smash Brothers, or anything else, that's always how it goes, because you don't want people like me having a say in that kind of thing, because, well, I'm just not good enough, and I'm not convinced enough of what I want myself. But anyway, my original point is that we're slowly realizing that even with the combo ban, Drizzle is still very powerful weather nonetheless. And as you can see on the graph, Patience is starting to wear very, very, very thin. Smogon's always been accused of being way too ban happy, but I think Drizzle's been given every possible chance so far. And, as I said, Patience is starting to wear very, very thin, 
after, you know, we keep banning stuff because of Drizzle that might not be banned under Drizzle. I already mentioned uh, the combo ban, of course, but also Manaphy, Thunderous. So we're getting closer and closer with, it, with each round to a majority on Drizzle. So I think it might even be achieved next month if a verdict isn't reached on Thunderous very fast. Which it won't happen, of course, because as I said, lots and lots of disagreement. So yeah, I'm a bit surprised that if there's anything wrong with Thunderous, that Drizzle hasn't even got a majority yet. But as I said, it's being given every chance, but I think it's going to run out of those chances sooner or later. And by the way, I imagine I already imagine the comment section for this video being wall to wall filled with Smogon doesn't know what they're doing! They're just banning everything! Well, if they're banning everything, then why hasn't Drizzle gotten a single majority yet? Even though there's probably a problem with it and most people are coming to that realization. So yeah, looking forward to round 5 to see what's gonna happen on that front. And as for Drought and Sandstream, well, no big surprise there. Both will continue to be allowed without any restriction. Though I'm a bit surprised that Drought had so many votes in favor of a ban, because uh, when I think of the very few problems that plague this metagame right about now, Drought isn't really one of them. It's worse than Sandstream for, for one. I think pretty much everyone can agree on that, but it still got more votes. Probably because the big reason behind nominating Sandstream was Garchomp or something like that. But uh, I don't know. I'm not in the head of those people who nominated, so I, I don't know for sure about that. And as for Latios and Emerald Deoxys, uh, they had a majority last round, so they were automatically included in the voting this round. And all I can say is what happened? I have no idea what happened. Uh, the, neither of them got 40%. Now I can sort of understand Emerald Deoxys because really it's... I don't think it's that bad, but Latios, since, you know, all, for all the time that people have been calling for its head and it was on the verge of being banned, suddenly it became okay without any really major changes to the metagame. Well, the only, the only thing that happened last time was that Blaziken got banned and that was it. So, I don't think the loss of Blaziken has anything to do with Latios suddenly being less broken, so... Yeah, I absolutely have no idea. Some people suggested that Latios' checks became a bit more common, stuff like Chansey, Blissey, a variety of the top tier, uh, steel types like Ferrothorn and Scizor... But is it that? I really can't tell for sure, and the fun part is to see the reactions that, as I said before, they range from, they know what they're doing, Latios can be beaten, to, what the hell are they thinking? They don't know what they're doing, Latios is an unstoppable monster! So, yeah, this is basically what happens with every decision they make, and nobody ever seems to be happy. And uh, finally, just uh, one word. Can we stop nominating Excadrill, please? Pretty please? I mean, come on, every time it's nominated. There's been four rounds so far, and it's been nominated every single time, and it was never even close. Excadrill is not broken. It can be beaten. So stop nominating it, please! So, with that being said, this concludes my little analysis, my two cents on the matter. These videos are starting to become a tradition, aren't they? So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time for more LPing fun.